Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson. I'm Daniel and today I'll be teaching you biology. Today's topic is growth. Now, what do we mean by growth? We can simply call growth the increase or we can say the irreversible increase in mass and size of a body or organs of a living organism. So we could, we could say it's the permanent increase in the mass and in the size of the body of a living organism or in the organs the, that, by that we mean the parts of the body of a living organism so growth could be the whole organism increasing in mass or in size or parts of the body of the living organism increasing in mass or in size now growth typically occurs through the multiplication of cells or cell division so that is the way growth typically occurs now the de development uh, that occurs during growth re is referring to the physiological and the functional maturation of the organism what I mean by that is the organism is increasing physiologically and functionally and functionally now that we've talked about growth Let's also talk about development. Now, development is slightly different from growth. Now, development can be referred to as the physiological and functional maturation of an organism. So, we just mean that an organism is getting more complex in function and in physiology. Physiology is just refer referring to the functioning of the different body parts of an organism. So, development is just increasing or improving in physiology and function of a living organism. We could also say development is the increase in capacity and the skill to effectively function. So that is development. Now that we've defined growth, let's talk about the processes that are involved in growth. What are the things that must happen for growth to occur? Number one is cell division. Now, cell division as the name implies is the dividing of cells so cell division is a process by which a cell increases in number and that is achieved by the cell dividing and this process of the cells dividing is called mitosis for growth specifically mitosis so mitosis is the type of cell division where uh, that enables great growth to occur Mitosis is the type of cell division that enables growth to occur. Now, the synthesis of a new protoplasm in a cell that leads to the doubling of the chromosomes. So, this, when a, proto, a new protoplasm is created in a new cell that has been divided, we lead to the doubling of the chromosomes, and that will lead to a new cell being actually formed. Now, when the cell actually divides into two, each daughter cell will become a new cell on its own. When I say daughter cell, I mean the new two cells that are formed by cell division, when the cell divides into two. Now, the daughter cells will have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So one daughter cell has the same number of chromosomes as the parent, parent cell, then another daughter cell has the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So two new cells are formed during mitosis which is cell division. Now, another process that is involved in growth is cell enlargement. Now, after we must have gone through cell division, after the cell has been divided, the next thing is cell enlargement. The cell has to enlarge and increase in size. Now, this process occurs after cell division and the daughter cell that has been formed, the two new daughter cells, absorb nutrients from their surroundings. Now, these nutrients that are absorbed is used by the cell to increase in mass and in size. In other words, the nutrients absorbed are used to enlarge the cell. So that is what occurs in cell enlargement. Now, part of this nutrient that is also absorbed is used to generate energy. Now, part of this nutrient that are absorbed by the cell is used to generate energy. And the rest of the uh, nutrients is assimilated into the cell and that leads to an enlargement of the cell so that is 
that about cell enlargement. That is how cell enlargement occurs. Now, another process involved in growth is cell differentiation. Now, after we must have gone through cell division, after cell division and after cell enlargement, the next step is the cell differentiation. Now, this process takes place immediately after cell enlargement. And what happens in this process is that each cell develops into a special type of cell by changing its shape and structure. What do we mean by this? Each cell is specialized after cell enlargement. So after the cell has divided and has been enlarged, differentiation is just specifying the cell into what it is specifically used for. So cells that are blood cells, for example, the red blood cells, will change in shape and structure to look more like red blood cells and to function as a red blood cell. So cell differentiation is just the process where a cell develops into a special type of cell by changing its shape and its structure to perform a specific or specialized or particular function. So that's what we mean by cell differentiation. Now, we've talked about the processes that are involved in growth. And we've talked, we said cell division is the first process or first step. Now, that cell division is specifically mitosis. The cell division that is involved in growth is mitosis. Now, I want to talk about what mitosis is all about, what occurs during mitosis. Now, mitosis produces two identical cells that have the same number of chromosomes and the same, and the same characteristics as the apparent cell. Now, mitosis is a cell division, as we've mentioned, and it leads to growth, but it can only occur in somatic cells. What we mean by somatic cells? We mean body cells, such as skin, bone, skin, bone marrow, lymph nodes, and injured places. So that is where mitosis can occur in animals. And mitosis can occur in plants, in the meristematic tissues in plants. Mitosis occurs specifically in the meristematic tissues of plants. Now, mitosis occurs in four stages majorly, which are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, before these four stages, there is a resting phase or a resting stage, which is called interphase. But the four major stages of Mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now let's talk about each of these phases or stages of mitosis. Now, the resting phase, which is called the interphase, that is not really a major part of the mitosis itself, is just a resting stage. And in this stage, the cell appears normal and it looks like a non dividing cell. The chromosomes are not visible. So that is interphase. The cell is just basically preparing for the other phases that are about to come. So interphase is the resting stage of mitosis. Now, the prophase, which is the first stage of mitosis, what occurs in this stage is that the chromosomes become visible and they, look, they appear as chromatin threads. Now, these chromosomes, they become shorter, thicker, and clearly visible. So the chromosomes become clear, they become visible in the prophase. Now each chromosome forms two distinct chromatids, two separate chromatids that are joined at the center. Each chromatid is joined at the center by a centromere. So what also occurs in this stage is that the nucleus gradually starts disappearing and the formation of spindle fibers commences. So that is what occurs in the prophase stage. Let's recap. The chromosomes become visible and clear. Then the chromosome forms two distinct chromatids that are joined at the center by the centromere. Then the nucleus starts to gradually disappear. And the, the formation of spindle fiber commences. Now, the next phase or the next stage, which is the metaphase, what occurs in this stage is that the chromosomes that are now called chromatids that have been paired 
arrange themselves along the equator or the middle of the spindle. Remember that in the first phase, which is the prophase, spindle fibers have been formed. Now, what happens in the beta phase is that these chromatids arrange themselves along the equator or the middle of the spindle. The, we could say it's the middle or call it the equator of the spindle fibers that have been formed. Now, these chromatids, the way they are also attached to the spindle or the spindle fiber is by their central mare, which is at the center of the chromatids. The next stage of mitosis, which is the anaphase, what occurs in this stage is that the chromatids of each chromosome separate. So the chromatids of each chromosome separate. Then these chromatids that have been separated start migrating to the poles. What I mean by poles? The ends of the cell. So if the cell is this way, one migrates to the upper part, one migrates to the lower part of the cell. So the way they migrate is by the elongation of the spindle axis. Then those, these chromatids reach the ends of the pole or the ends of the cell or reach the pole of the cell by the end of anaphase. So still, it's all still during anaphase that this migration of the chromatids to the poles of the cell occurs. So that is that about anaphase. Now the last phase, which is telophase. What happens in this stage is that the cell starts dividing into two by the line of division at the equator. So the cell starts dividing into two. Then the chromosome starts to lose their thick appearance the chromosome doesn't look as thick as it was in the prophase then nuclear material the nucleus and the nuclear membrane is reformed now the spindle structure that has been formed in the cell disappears also and the cell splits completely into two daughter cells that have the same condition as the interface so they look, the two daughter cells that are formed look exactly like the way the cell was originally before division at interface. Now this division of the cell at the middle or at the center of the cell or at the equator during telophase is called cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the division of a cell into two daughter cells during telophase so the major you could also say the major thing that occurs during telophase is cytokinesis so with that we've come to the end of today's class on growth next class we'll still continue this topic growth we'll now be talking about aspects of growth and regulation of growth by hormones see you in our next video